everybody, today we are making a homemade Tabasco sauce. Uh, Tabasco sauce is uh, one of the most iconic hot sauces out there. They've been around for many, many years. One of the OG hot sauce companies. Uh, Tabascos are uh, peppers I like to grow in my own garden, so I like to make a homemade version. But I'm gonna show you how uh, to make this sauce with a very simple brine method that's pretty foolproof and uh, uh, really easy to do. And it'll let you make a good homemade version that is as tasty and spicy as you want it to be. So uh, let me show you how to make it. So Tabasco sauce is made by a process of fermentation and they will ferment their peppers for up to three years in oak barrels. Uh, lucky for us, we don't have to wait three years, though you could if you want to. Uh, we're really gonna only ferment for a week or two weeks, really, as long as you want to. Uh, fermentation is a process of preservation that's been around for, for a long, long, long time. It's one of our oldest methods of preserving foods. Uh, it may sound a little scary, but it's actually really easy to do. Uh, fermentation is basically the breakdown of foods uh, by uh, natural occurring enzymes or microorganisms. In this case, it's lactic acid bacteria. So what we're doing by creating a simple brine solution is creating a environment that is, uh, allows the lactic acid bacteria to thrive and break down the peppers, but it keeps out a lot of the bad bacteria that causes them to rot and you know, be bad for you. So um, if you're really interested in learning more about the chemistry and, and creating mashes, I actually have a page that I'll link to for you on how to create a pepper mash, and you can use it in so many ways. Uh, but for today, we're gonna use a simple brine method that I find is much more foolproof, very easy to do, and it works great for me every time. So, uh, all right, let's do it. All right, to make homemade Tabasco sauce, my friends, we need Tabasco peppers. So I picked some from my garden here. Check it out, guys. Fresh Tabasco is right from the garden. Perfect for hot sauce. And you can make this hot sauce with other peppers, but then you really you know, can't call it Tabasco, right? <laughs> so uh, I have uh, five ounces of peppers, the recipe calls for. This is actually a little bit more than five ounces. Um, just kind of shows you how versatile the overall sauce really is. But you need to see the amount right here. It's, it's quite a lot of peppers. Um, so what you can do, we can process this in a food processor to break it all down, or you can really just kind of give it a good rough chop. Uh, we just want to make sure it all fits into the jar that we're using. Um, mostly, you can probably even do these whole because they're so small, but you want to make sure the brine can get in there. So go ahead and just give everything a nice chop like so. And you don't have to remove the seeds because we're going to be straining this out later. Also, use gloves if the chili peppers bother your skin. I don't really wear gloves unless I'm working with super hots, but uh, wearing gloves is a good idea. All right, everything's roughly chopped. So next we're gonna move everything over to our fermentation jar. Make sure you have a jar that's large enough to fit all the peppers in and they can mash down in there and fit our brine. Um, but also make sure everything's very clean. It's very important to have very clean jars in a work environment. You can sterilize if you need to or just clean everything very thoroughly because you don't wanna introduce any bad um, elements that'll uh, ruin or, or infect your ferment. So, all right, I think everything moved over here. All right, I've got everything into my jar and you can see how much I filled in here. This is a, a half quart jar. All right, so next we're gonna make our brine. So this is just a very simple way to do it. I've got two cups of unchlorinated water and you can use distilled water, just don't use chlorinated water. And salt, so I have one tablespoon of salt Make sure you use non-iodized salt. You don't want to use uh, like salt with iodine or caking agents. So something like pickling salt is great or Himalayan sea salt, um, kosher salt. So go ahead and stir this into the water to make our brine. Go ahead and stir that up. And we're going to go ahead and pour this over our peppers into the jar. You will have brine left over, that's okay. You can use it for something else or toss it. I'm gonna let that kind of settle itself in and pour a little bit more brine in there as needed. You will see that the peppers do start to rise. Another method of doing this is to mix salt in to the peppers themselves and let it produce its own juices in an acidic environment. But this is just more of a foolproof way. All right, so make sure you leave a little bit of headspace in there and the peppers will rise up to the top. It's very important to keep the peppers down below the brine. So I am using a little glass disc that came with a uh, product that I like to use. So I'll just drop it in there and it's gonna keep everything down. Whoop, of course I made a mess. Mike makes a mess everywhere he goes. And uh, if you need to remove a little bit of the brine, you can do so. All right, but yeah, there it is. Everything's down in there. 
right. And then make sure we wipe these tops down a little bit. Really don't want to have anything that can get infected. You can cap it right now and uh, you can let it sit and ferment for a while. But if you do so, the gases start to build up as uh, the process fermentation occurs and um, you'll need to release some of that gas. You can open it and burp it. Or I like to use these uh, little pickle tops. Um, it has a little membrane right here that you can, uh, you know, you, it, it lets the gases escape. And it's a product from Mason Tops. And I've been using this for years. Works great for me. And I'll put a link so you guys can check this out. You can also use airlocks which work great, a lot of people use those. I just find this to be much more easy to use. So I've got this on top and I need my lid. It's gonna screw this right on. So boom, it's that easy, my friends. All right, so now we're gonna let this ferment for at least one week, uh, probably two weeks. I like to go about a couple weeks, but you can really go longer. You can go a month, two, th I've done three month fermentations. Um, it'll keep going and uh, you'll just start to notice activity. It starts to bubble. But right now I'm just gonna set it into a dark place and uh, ferment a good heat level uh, in the house would be like between 55 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, I'm gonna do it at about 70 and it'll keep a nice fermentation level going for, uh, for a good week or so. And it helps to put a label with the date on your fermentation jar so you don't forget when you started your ferment. Hey, if you guys wanna make a non-fermented version of homemade Tabasco sauce, check out my homemade Louisiana style hot sauce uh, recipe here on YouTube. Uh, you can basically use that exact recipe, but use Tabasco peppers and uh, you'll get fantastic results. All right, we'll check it out when uh, next week. All right, so we've been fermenting for just under two weeks and we're good to go to get our homemade Tabasco sauce going. So uh, got my fermented chilies right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid at this point. And you can see that it's uh, very cloudy. Uh, that's what happens with the brine when uh, you ferment. It gets very cloudy and you can smell it. It smells acidic and a little sour, but it's also very pleasant. Uh, you would know if you had some kind of a, like an infection with your ferment, if you have like fuzzy growth on there or uh, a bad smell. You really gotta trust your nose and your eyes when you're fermenting. But this looks really good. And we can check the pH at this point if we want to. And uh, I'm using a Thermalworks pH meter. Uh, I am an affiliate. I really love their products. Um, I definitely recommend them and I can leave a link for you for that. Um, but if I'm checking the pH, you can see that this is uh, under 4.6. It's about 4.5. And uh, that's what's considered shelf stable. And uh, at this point, you could actually like use this as is. You can process it and uh, it's, you know, you, you can keep it out or uh, best to keep it in the refrigerator. It'll still keep slowly fermenting um, at this stage. So if you processed it and you put it into bottles, uh, you might need to burp it because uh, it'll continue to ferment a little bit and build up gases and you don't want your bottles to explode. Uh, you could keep it in a jar with a membrane in the refrigerator and refrigeration slows it down a lot um, and, and really almost stops it. But uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna strain out the brine and I'm gonna use vinegar because I want this to taste a lot more like actual Tabasco, which is known for being quite vinegary. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and strain this. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm also gonna take out my glass. And I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna save the brine here in case I need to use it. All right, so let me set the brine aside. And go ahead and pour this Tabasco into a bowl. Next, I have a cup of vinegar here. I have a cup of white wine vinegar. You can use your favorite vinegar, um, but I like to use, just make sure you use a good quality vinegar that you love the flavor of. I'm gonna also add a, just a quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, that brine is quite salty if we need to use more of it, but. Uh, all right, so let me process my Tabasco sauce here. All right, look at that. It's nice and processed up. It's looking like Tabasco. It smells good. All right, so I'm checking the pH here, 
And uh, right, I'm at uh, about 3.15, um, pretty much within the range. A lot of hot sauces you'll find are like maybe 3.1 to 3.5, 3.6, but hot sauces are pretty much more acidic. And uh, the vinegar is, is very acidic compared to the brine itself. So uh, um, right now I'm gonna add just a little bit more water to thin this out and it'll bring the pH up. I usually like to shoot for around 3.5 for myself personally. Add this in there. And I'm gonna mix this up a little bit and we'll strain it. You don't really have to measure the pH as, you know, uh, as accurately as this if you don't want to. You'll have enough vinegar, it'll be good. You can use pH strips, but they're not as accurate. All right, let me get the strain here. Try not to make a mess. Got quite a bit of pulp left in there. Just kind of uh, strain out the pulp here. And any leftover pulp, uh, you can save it and rehydrate it if you want to. And you can grind it into a powder. Uh, this has a lot of seeds left in it. And uh, when you grind the seeds, they can be quite bitter. So that's something to consider. But uh, if you have a lot of good pulp, I mean, it's great for spices. I usually do it when I'm making uh, Mexican style sauces. So look at that, look at that uh, Tabasco sauce in there. That looks fantastic. It looks like Tabasco, smells like Tabasco. Take a look, my friends. Mm? Look at that, look, looks amazing, doesn't it? Mm? It's gonna smell it. All right, so at this point, you can adjust now. You can add more salt if you want to. You can add more water. Uh, to thin it out a little bit more. You can add more vinegar if you want more acidity, more, you know, that uh, vinegar pop. Um, you could even add other acids like uh, lime juice or lemon juice or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's get this into a bottle. All right, so it looks like I have uh, just under two cups, about one and three quarters cups or so. And again, you can add a little bit more water if you want to or vinegar to, you know, bring that up a little bit more. But pour some into bottles here. Look at that. So it looks like I got just under three bottles of hot sauce with this particular batch. And it's easy to scale up if you want to. Um, you can see that the color of this particular homemade Tabasco sauce is a lot more vibrant and brighter than the uh, Tabasco sauce brand, which is very aged. Um, but the flavor is definitely there. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, one thing I do want to say is uh, there's a lot more that you can say about fermentation. Um, I have a lot of information on the website, so I'll leave some links to my homemade Tabasco sauce page and you can check out information there. But also uh, I have a page on how to ferment peppers and make pepper mash. So uh, I'll leave a link for that as well and you can learn a lot more about fermentation in general. Um, but for now, let's give it a taste. Yes, very vinegary, typical Tabasco. It's got a real nice heat on the back of the tongue, back of my throat. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be enjoying this. I think this will probably last me only a week. <laughs> so one last thing I wanna say about this particular recipe is a lot of times I like to cook the hot sauce. Uh, so cooking, what that does, it actually stops the fermentation process altogether and it further melds the overall flavors. A lot of people don't like to cook their sauces like this because it does remove the probiotic benefits of your hot sauce. Um, but it really, if you don't care about that so much, uh, cooking it is the best way. It'll stop fermentation and you can bottle it, keep it in the fridge, and you don't have to worry about your bottles exploding. That's it, my friends. That's how you make a homemade Tabasco sauce. I hope you love it. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think of the recipe in the comments below. And I'd love to hear, um, are you gonna make this sauce? Are you a Tabasco fan? Let's hear it. But uh, hey, if you guys are looking to make more hot sauce, uh, pull up a couple of hot sauce recipes. I have a number of them here on YouTube and a lot of them on the website. So uh, I love making hot sauce. So uh, all right, I hope to see you in the kitchen next time. Mike from Chili Pepper Madness. Bye.